Today, we are celebrating the last Sunday of the Epiphany, Feast of the Transfiguration. We pray that this service will be a blessing to you and your family. May God bless you. Welcome again. <laughs> Talk 
Angelus is the morn unaccompanied by thee. Joyless is the day's return till thy mercies beams I see. Till they inward light impart, clad my eyes and warm my heart. This is endless soul of mine, is a gloom of sin and grief. Fill me with sea divine, scatter are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. On page 101, blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen, alleluia, alleluia. Together we pray. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice, and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. The collect for purity. Um, Almighty God, to you our hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we will have the curious followed by the Gloria.
Jesus Christ, born in the Son of the Father, nor of the blood, nor of the blood, to take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive all prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. chapter reading verses 1 to 12. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives, as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the, to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, 
you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel are its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointing Psalm 50 can be found on page 531. The Lord, the God of gods, had spoken. He had called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. All of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silent. Before him there is a consuming flame, and wrung about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and seen it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the righteousness is lost. For God himself is judge. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, one world without end. Amen. The second reading. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, reading from verse 3 to 6. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
taste of death. We see thy kingdom come. We fain would towards the fish and bright and take this silver home. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter, beginning at the second verse. Glory to Christ our Savior. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, our Lord. I speak to you. Lift up holy hands and magnify his name 
and worship Him. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify His name and worship Him. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify His name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Christ the Lord. I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Transfiguration, which is the last Sunday of Epiphany. And the reading we would have heard from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 9, gives us an account of the Transfiguration. Peter, James, and John are led up a high mountain along with Jesus, and the four are by themselves. Now, most people assume that Jesus took these three aside on this and on other occasions, because they were especially favored by the Lord. But it could also be that these were the three who were more likely to get in trouble, so he kept them close to keep an eye on them. For whatever reason, these are the three that are with Jesus. And they start up the mountain, yes, as a retreat. And quickly, this isolation time changes as the glory of Jesus shines forth before them when Jesus is transformed right before their eyes. And he's transformed before them, Mark says. Mark does his best to describe for us what Jesus looked like. No doubt through the eyes of Peter, because Peter was the one who generally gave account of what he saw. It says that Jesus' whole appearance shone forth in glory, brightly. And his clothes became shining white, whiter than anyone on earth had seen or anyone could bleach it. That's the kind of white I wish my robe had, but that's not the case. The thing about it is, when we think about Jesus being transfigured before them, we have to consider that outside of just the physical change in appearance of Jesus, something bigger was about to happen. Jesus had already begun to exercise his ministry after his baptism. At his baptism, you will remember, the heavens opened and the dove came down and it was declared that he was the Son of God. That was the beginning of his ministry. He had been carrying out his ministry for about three years before this moment of transfiguration. A new change was going to take place in Jesus' ministry. The ministry was about to become even more serious than it had been before. Interestingly enough, at this transfiguration, it ends with a same cloud overshadowing them and the same voice as at the baptism saying, this is my beloved son, listen to him. It sounds very similar, but there's a slight difference in what the voice said. At the baptism, the voice said, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. And this time, the voice gives a command for those who are in the presence of this happening to listen to the Son of God. Interestingly enough, it is both a show that affirms who Jesus is as the Messiah and as the Son of God, and one that shows us where the change in Jesus' ministry is about to take place. Before the baptism, when he was affirmed by the Spirit and the voice, Jesus' ministry started from him being simply a fellow growing up in a Jewish community to a teacher, a rabbi, a prophet, sharing the news of the kingdom of God and calling people's hearts to repentance. But here now, He's going to go into full Messiah mode. He's going to be lied upon. He's going to be beaten and treated harshly. And eventually, he's going to give his life for the saving of the whole world. And what a dramatic shift it's going to be. The shift is so dramatic 
that those who were great prophets before Jesus showed up on the scene. Elijah and Moses appeared to be with Jesus, even as Peter and James and John sat on the sidelines to watch. These two men, Elijah and Moses, were representatives who were caught up to God. Moses represents those who died and went to glory, and Elijah represents those who are caught up to heaven without death. And that's interesting. When we think of the last day and the judgment that will come, we remember that the reading in the Bible tells us that when the Son of Man returns, those who have died will be raised and those who are alive will be caught up with him in the clouds, represented by Moses, who died and was now present, and Elijah, who never died but went to heaven very much alive. Wow. But it also represents Moses, the law, and Elijah, the prophet. The sum of the Old Testament, their revelations, comes to meet with Jesus, the hero of the New Testament, right there on that Mount of Transfiguration. And all of them together, the past prophecies fulfilled, the laws fulfilled, and the future of salvation, all united in that space to begin about this change. Now, it seems like the disciples knew who Elijah and Moses was and could identify them. Because Peter, in a very unwise offer, makes a suggestion to build three tabernacles, one to honor Jesus, one to honor Moses, and one to honor Elijah. He didn't even think about where he and James and John would live on the mountain. He was so caught up. And sometimes when we are caught up in a moment, caught by surprise, we don't always make wise decisions. But the reading tells us that he did not understand what he was saying. And we too often get into trouble when we speak like Peter did, not knowing what to say. Sometimes we say the wrong things. Now, it seems like the disciples knew who Elijah and Moses was and could identify them. Because Peter, in a very unwise offer, makes a suggestion to build three tabernacles, one to honor Jesus, one to honor Moses, and one to honor Elijah. He didn't even think about where he and James and John would live on the mountain. He was so caught up. And sometimes when we are caught up in a moment, caught by surprise, we don't always make wise decisions. But the reading tells us that he did not understand what he was saying. And we too often get into trouble when we speak like Peter did, not knowing what to say. Sometimes we say the wrong things. But Peter, open-hearted, bold, enthusiastic, made a profession, one that made sense to him. Let us stay here, he says, build three houses, dwell in the presence of the Lord. And while it might seem a little bit foolish, it made sense because that is where we should be. We should be longing to always remain in the presence of the glory of God. And the glory of God and being in God's presence isn't always going to be necessarily a pleasant experience in terms of sometimes when the enemy knows that you are filled with the glory of God, that is when he will try to assault you the most. But like Peter, it is more about focusing on the moment of where we are with God. Interestingly enough, as they descend from the mountain, after hearing the voice affirm Jesus, Jesus commanded them that they should tell no one what they had seen until after the Son of Man was risen from the dead. But after all, it was Peter, James, and John, and they kept this word to themselves. The truth is, as impressive as this experience was, it was not Peter, James, and John's duty to proclaim that Jesus was the Messiah. It was the duty of those to whom Jesus proclaimed it himself that they would come to believe. And we know how the story ends. 
some will believe, and some will reject to the point of the crucifixion. At the end of the day, have you been able to witness the glory of God? Have you seen the glory of God in the things around you, in the lives around you that you meet on a daily basis? Sometimes you might be tempted to dwell in the moments of good that are high and full of hope and try to neglect or pretend that the low moments in the valley don't exist. We need to remember, brothers and sisters, that the same Jesus transformed and affirmed in glory on the top of the mountain is the same Jesus that is going to go through the hardships of the arrest and the crucifixion. Because the good in life and the hardships in life cannot steal from the glory of God when we choose to dwell in the presence of God and live in his glory, we need to remember that the God of the mountain is the same God of the valley and he will be with us in the highs and in the lows. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
General Intercession, Farm B, on page 107. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That, that we, we all, all may be one. one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests and deacons that, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that, that there may be justice and, and truth on the earth. earth give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that, that our, our works, works may find, find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that, that they, they may be delivered, delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May, May we also come to share in your, your heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Now let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for Ismail Rakenya, William Hoop, Norma Gentle, Brenda Gabriel, Anna Mae Ferguson, Beth Sanchez, Father Constancia Perez, Reverend Mario Marrera, Lena Williams, Maud Williams, Elsie Evans, Cordelia Gardner, Leolyn Clare, Jean Longsworth, Dorothy Boudram, Lena Simmons, Hilda Mencius, Lincoln Bailey, Beryl Fairweather, Gwyneth Gillett, Betty Fairweather, Aaron Arms, Ambrose Peters, Margaret Mackenzie, Lincoln Gillett, Anne Gillett, Louisa Gill, Joyce Wade, Alma Wade, Father Eric and Verilyn Richards, George Bahadur, Pearl Stewart, Lady Norma Young, Dr. Kenrick and Marlene Leslie, Catherine Flowers, Julianne Williams, Beverly Ferguson, Karen Middleton, Dominique Rodriguez, Raymond Davis, Russell Kemp, Marley Castillo, Gilbert Ellis Domingo, Presiding Bishop Michael Curry, Norman Fairweather, and all those for whom we offer our prayers. May God's healing grace and mercy be with all our sisters and brothers. We also pray for those who have died and all those we love and will miss. May they rest in peace. We ask for the consolation and strength of God's Holy Spirit to be with their families at this time. We pray for peace and goodwill to prevail in this world. Whatever may be your need, know that God's loving presence and grace are sufficient to see you through. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords to your will and the good things which we dare not, 
or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our service continues with our act of penitence on page 123. We'll be using form E. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and God is just, and he will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Using the prayer at the bottom of page 123, let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left from we are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all of this past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our greeting of peace, we will use form B on page 125. If you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then you will come along for your gift. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And so with you. Kindly share with each other the sign of Christ. As we prepare to receive the offering today, we take this opportunity to give thanks to you for your ongoing support of the Anglican Diocese of Belize with your prayers and contributions. Thanks to your support, we are able to continue with this good work that God has called us to do in this part of His vineyard. You can make your contributions to any of our accounts. Firstly, for the Belize Bank, our account numbers are 129-806-010-120-001 or 2363-7628-0.
0025. Or you can pay using your eCash digital wallet via phone or tablet by scanning the QR code on your screen or clicking the link provided. You can also use our accounts at Atlantic Bank, account number 21064371, or all at the M&T Bank, number 1 Fountain Plaza, Buffalo, New York, account number 1569802. Once again, thank you very much for your support, and may God continue to bless you and your family. Offer unto God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and pay your vows unto the Most High. Our service continues with our offering. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to be in thanks for the Almighty Everlasting God. The proper preface for Epiphany on page 127. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because in coming to dwell among us as man, he revealed the radiance of his glory and brought us out of darkness into his own marvelous light. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Therefore, Father, according to the command of your dearly beloved Son, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer you, Father, a sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Redeemer. And as we partake of this holy food of new and unending life, may your Holy Spirit establish us as a royal priesthood, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John, St. Matthew, St. Monica, St. Jerome, and all your sons and daughters who share in the eternal inheritance. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and in heaven, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, so let us be bold to pray. Amen.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied, and we will sing our songs of praise to Him. At this time, we have our communion. O loving God, in union with Christian people through the world and across the centuries, gathered to make Eucharist, hearing your holy world and receiving the precious body and blood of your dear Son, I offer you praise and thanksgiving. Even though I am currently not partaking of the bread of heaven and drinking the cup of life, I pray that you will unite me with all the baptized and with your Son who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in me and send your Holy Spirit, that I may be filled with your presence. Amen. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Be all else but not to me, save that heart. Be thou my best thought in the day and the night, both waking and sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom, be thou my true word, be thou ever with me, and I with thee, Lord, be thou
Birthday greetings this week go to Hoover Wright, Juliet Hector, Dion Williams, Adelma Rakenia, Sherry Ann Wilson, Hayden Noel, Janelle Salter, Pran Sharma, Renata Dos Santos, Anjali Maharaj, Kino Swanberg, Nicole De Freitas, Brindel Monins, Rafi Hutchinson, Sharon Davison, Irma Myers, Leroy Sutherland, Comey Sanchez, Reverend Samuel Frampton, Marsha Gill, Bernard Bevins, Erica Valentine, Shanika Arno, Major Jolica Leandre. May God continue to richly bless and keep each and every one of you. We also extend congratulations to those celebrating anniversaries at this time. Anniversaries of marriage, anniversaries of ordination, anniversaries of the passing of a loved one, or any other memorable occasion. May God's loving presence be what makes all the difference in your lives. Amen. We would like to take the time to thank all those who participated in this morning's service. We want to thank our readers, our musicians, and the online worship team, the members of the diocesan um, ministry team, online ministry team. We would like to thank especially those members of St. Jerome's Mission Church who led us in such a beautiful worship this morning. A big thank you to Love FM for carrying the service for us both on TV and on radio. And especially a thank you to our viewing and listening audience for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Greece. If you are interested in participating in our service, do feel free to get in contact with us at our diocesan head office number at 227-3029, 227-8055, or you can WhatsApp 626-1821. You can also email us at bcediocese at btl.net. Once again, a most blessed Sunday to one and all. Do have a wonderful and productive week. We close now with our final blessing. The Lord be with you. And the Lord is with you. Let us pray. May Christ, the Son of Gladness, gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom, and may the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen.
Yeah.